This screencast is one in a series on process calculations, and the title is Multiple Connected Units. The content is Multiple Unit Processes, some example, the properties, solution strategies, one example based on the total analysis approach, including the six-step methodology and a solution, one example based on the sequential approach, a discussion about what can go wrong, and finally, some comments. Here we have one example of a multiple unit system. It's a wastewater treatment plant, and it shows how various basins with different processes are connected by means of various flows, where there are fluxes of components or elements. Another example is an ecosystem where various trophic levels communicate and exchange mass. And finally, industrial manufacturing systems may contain several units which are connected to each other. Multiple unit systems are characterized by the fact that they have internal connections. Another characteristic is that the output from one unit is input to another unit. And a third characteristic is that the various units share stream variables. In this case, the stream variables that are shared are F3A and F3B. Process calculations may be performed at different levels of aggregation. For example, one level of aggregation is to look at the outer boundary of the whole system. That could be of interest if we're just interested in the inputs and outputs to the whole system, but do not care about the internal flows within the system. Another possibility is to focus on one or more individual units, such as this one or this one. Another approach, and that is actually the one we're going to apply most of the times, is that we view the total system. And that means that we view all of the individual units together. In all cases, the degree of freedom analysis must relate to the system boundaries that we have defined because we can only set up mass balances involving fluxes that cross system boundaries. An example, based on the total analysis approach. Let us consider a system where we have a feed consisting of 50% in molar fraction of A and 50% of B. And they are fed to a system that consists of two units, one separation unit and one mixing unit. In the separation unit, 50% of the A in the feed is removed. And in the mixer, B is added to achieve a concentration of B of 90% in the output from the process. Calculate all the fluxes in the system. First, we should remember that we should apply the six-step methodology where number one is to clarify the process conditions, number two is to make a process chart with the system boundary and the stream variables, three is to make a degree of freedom analysis, four is to set up the systems of equations, and then we should also double check the degree of freedom analysis, number five to make a computer-aided solution, and finally to provide a clear answer. So the first step of the solution is to clarify the process conditions. And in this case, we have a non-reacting system at steady state, and the problem is stated in terms of molar units. The process chart, where the system boundaries and the stream variables, should then be created. We have two components, and we have two units. We have two input streams. We will call them 1 and 4. We have one internal stream, stream 3. And finally, we have two output streams stream 2 and stream 5, each one containing one or two components, A and B. The aim of the degree of freedom analysis is to clarify whether there are equations enough to solve for all the unknown stream variables. The number of stream variables are 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. There are no specified stream variables, but there are several mass balances that can be created. And we now recall that we can always put up two mass balances for each component, for each subsystem. 
So the mass balances for the separation unit are two, one for A and one for B. We can set up two mass balances for the mixing unit and also there are three subsidiary process informations. One related to the input, one related to stream two, and one related to the concentration stream five. These add up to seven. However, in this case we're allowed to introduce a basis of calculation because no flux has been defined. So after introduction of the basis of calculation, the degrees of freedom become zero. The system of equation includes four mass balances. The mass balances for the separation unit and the mass balances for the mixture units. It includes the information about the concentration in stream 1, about the removal in the separation unit, and about the concentration in stream 5. And finally, we have the basis of calculation, which is given an arbitrary number. These can be arranged and organized in a system of equation in matrix notation as a times x equals y, where a is a matrix of coefficients. All these matrices are shown here. Note that the right-hand side of the equation contains a number. If the right-hand side only contains zeros, the calculation cannot be completed. It is important to double-check that the coefficient matrix does not contain lines, and that is, equations that are linearly dependent. The way to do this is to determine the rank of the matrix. The rank tells us the largest sub-matrix that can be formed within the matrix, and that sub-matrix should have a determinant different from zero. In this case, the rank of the coefficient matrix is eight. That means that there are no linearly dependent lines in the matrix, which means that there are no linearly dependent equations, and it is possible to find a unique solution to this system of equations. The fifth step is to make the numerical solution, and that involves defining the matrix A and defining the matrix Y in MATLAB, and then X can easily be calculated. We will now look at another approach, what I call the sequential approach. Above, the solution was based on a degree of freedom analysis which included all the stream variables and all the subsystems. And the system of equations had the same number of equations as the total number of stream variables. But there's also an alternative method, a sequential solution method. In that case, each subsystem is analyzed separately. And one can begin with one subsystem that can be solved, and then the results from this solution can be used to solve for the other subsystem. So we should use the calculated stream variables to evaluate the consecutive units. We should now make a degree of freedom analysis. And let us start with a separation unit. It has five stream variables. There are no specified stream variables, but we can set up two mass balances, one for A and one for B. And we also have two subsidiary process informations, one related to stream A and one related to stream 2. If we include a basis of calculation, the degrees of freedom become zero. That means that we can solve for all the stream variables related to the separation unit. If we make a corresponding degree of freedom analysis for the mixer, we find that we have five stream variables, that we can set up two mass balances, one for A and one for B, but we only have one subsidiary process information, the one related to the concentrations is stream 5. And since we cannot set up a basis of calculation if we already have introduced one for the separation unit, then we have two degrees of freedom. So the strategy would be to solve the separation unit first for all the stream variables, including F3A and F3B. Thereafter, the degree of freedom analysis for the mixer will be the following. We then have five stream variables of the mixer, but we have two specified stream variables, F3A and F3B. We can set up two mass balances, one for A and one for B, and we have the subsidiary process information. That is, that we have 90% B in stream 5. And thus, 
the degree of freedom analysis shows us that the system is possible to solve. Looking at the system of equations, for the first step, when we treat the separation unit, we get five equations. The two mass balances, the equation showing the concentration in stream one, the removal of A in the separation unit, and the basis of calculation. Step two involves the mixer. And then we have got two numbers from the first step, that is the numbers for F3A and F3B. We have the two mass balances, and we have the equation that describes the constraint regarding the concentration in stream 5. In matrix notation, we get one matrix and a vector of stream variables for the first step, and we get another matrix for coefficients, a vector of stream variables for the second step. And we see which two stream variables, F3A and F3B, that are common for the two systems of equations, and that is the stream variables that connect the two units with each other. But what can go wrong? Well, even if the degree of freedom analysis indicates that the degrees of freedom is zero, there's no real guarantee for a unique solution. Because the equations or informations, they must be placed correctly among the subsystems. Compare the following informations. In the second unit, B is added to achieve a concentration of B of 90% in the output of the process. This relates to the concentration in stream number 5. Let's compare that to the ratio between F3A and F3B is 1 to 2. That information relates to the conditions in the stream connecting the two units. Now we can make a new degree of freedom analysis changing the first equation that describes the concentrations in stream 5 to the one that describes the ratio between the fluxes in the stream connecting the two units. And we see that it has changed. Unit S, the separation units, has a negative number of degrees of freedom because we have moved one process information so that it affects the degree of freedom analysis for the separation unit. So for the new equations, a double check will show that the rank of the new coefficient matrix is 7, and that is less than 8. And since we have 8 stream variables, that means that this system of equations will not give us a unique solution to a mass balance problem. Some comments. The equations and information used must be balanced among the various units. And the level of resolution in the calculations depends on the equations and information available, but also the question to be answered. To repeat, the content of this lecture was multiple unit processes, some example properties, solution strategies, one example based on the total analysis approach, one example based on sequential approach, and finally a discussion about what can go wrong, and some comments.